It's early, but I'd bet this will go down as the most divisive installment of Stranger Things 2, and maybe the entire series to date. On paper, an 11 bottle episode sounds amazing. But perhaps the biggest problem with The Lost Sister is the placement of the episode. Things had just started to really pick up, and instead of building on the frightening scene at the Hawkins Laboratory, we go hang out with a mohawked fella named Axel and a lovable gentleman named Funshine maybe the best worst name ever. Mama, Eleven can be heard saying, It's me, Jane. I'm home. The episode opens inside Eleven's mother Terry's dream circle. Among the quick glimpses we get are a young Terry, a rainbow room, a baby, two children, a sunflower, some bald guy, and Dr. Brenner. Suddenly, Eleven snaps out of it her nose and Mama's nose are bleeding. Eleven tells Aunt Becky about the other girl in the rainbow room she thinks this is why her mom wanted to talk to her. Luckily, Terry had kept files of other missing kids, and as Becky looks through them, Eleven immediately notices one, an Indian girl from London. After an initial unsuccessful attempt, Eleven stares at the mysterious girl's picture and is able to locate her. When she rushes to tell Becky, she overhears her aunt on the phone talking about, and maybe trying to contact, Hopper. This causes to Eleven to run off. Meanwhile, Mama's TV goes from static to the Action 8 news. And the TV really wants us to notice the 8. Thanks, we get it. Previously, Chapter 6, the Spy Eleven is back on the road, and, thankfully, this time she takes a bus and doesn't hitchhike with some strange guy. She arrives in Chicago, and when she steps off the bus, all she sees are cops and rude mouth breathers. Braving her way through Skid Row, Eleven comes across a seemingly abandoned warehouse, where she finds the bank robbing crew from the beginning of the season. They aren't very welcoming of Shirley Temple. Mr. Mohawk, a.k.a. Axel, is especially threatening, pulling out a knife. But he's suddenly spooked by spiders crawling all over his hand. The thing is, no one else can see them. I told you to stay out of my head, he yells at Callie Linnea Berthelsen, or it as we know her from episode 1. Eleven quickly proves that she's no shit so when she picks up Axel's knife with her mind. Studying the girl, Callie pulls up Eleven's sleeve, revealing the 011 tattoo, which leads Callie to reveal her 0081. Sister, they say to each other as they embrace. The sisters do some catching up on the roof. Callie is a very supportive long-lost sister. What you can do is incredible, it makes you special, Jane, she tells her. Callie's gift is that she can make people see or not see whatever she chooses. Must be nice not having to worry about shopping for a Halloween costume. Are you real? asks Eleven, adorably touching Callie to make sure. After setting her sister up with a bed and blanket, Callie gets sentimental. I just feel whole, like a piece of me was missing and now it's not, she shares. I think this is your home. Not sure which is a nicer home, this abandoned warehouse or Hopper's creepy cabin. It's not exactly sweet dreams for Eleven as she goes to sleep. In her dream circle, she can hear the message Hopper left for her. I want you to know I'm not mad at you, he says. I'm just sorry. Callie interrupts, waking her up so she can be properly introduced to the rest of the team. The fellow outcasts consist of spider-hating Axel, Dottie, Mac, and Funshine. Callie saved them, so now they help her the people responsible for what happened to her and Eleven. I'm a fighter, declares Eleven. I've ed. I'd say Callie's recruiting efforts are going pretty well so far. She wants her sister to find her anger and move a train car toward them. As Callie eggs her on, Eleven thinks of Max with Mike, the experiments done to her, Mama being taken, and her fight with Hopper. It works, the train moves, and Eleven falls to the ground. Callie is a hell of a motivator she's like the Tony Robbins for kids with superpowers. Now that Eleven has passed that test, she's shown the team's wall of bad men. She recognizes one of them from her mom's dream circle. The bald man is Ray Carroll, and he also hurt Callie. Fifty bucks says Ray's about to be the one hurting. Eleven goes into tracker mode, and she's even better than Jeremy Renner that's for all you wind river heads. But before they can go eliminate him, it's time for a classic 80s makeover montage. Out is the old Eleven style and in is the slicked back hair, popped collar wearing Eleven. And how does she look bitchin'? Recap continues on page 2.